Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. This morning we are chatting with Dr. Lisa Musai, Chief Veterinary Officer at the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, because there seems to be an outbreak of blue air disease. And this morning we're going to find out what that is and how we can manage it and how it affects us generally speaking. Good morning, Doc. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I am good. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for waking up early and joining us. We definitely appreciate it. Tell me about blue air disease. What is it and who does it affect? Okay, so blue air disease is also known as PRRS, which is porcine, reproductive, and respiratory syndrome. And it's a very species-specific disease. It mm -hmm. affects pigs only. Okay. All right. So is there any... Well, I mean, we eat pigs generally. I mean, not the whole... Not everybody, but... A lot of people do. Yes. Uh, should we be concerned about the pigs that we're eating? No. So PRRS is not a zoonotic disease. And mm -hmm. what that means is that two things. One, humans cannot get the infection from handling pigs. Okay. Nor can they get infected from eating pork. So our local pork is safe to eat. All right. So tell me, what, what, is, the what, what is the blue ear disease? What is it? I mean, you said it's a, it's a reproductive disease. Right. So does it affect the, the pig's ability to give birth? Or how sure. Is it? It's reproductive and respiratory. So you have reproductive signs in the pigs mm -hmm. where you have abortion, stillbirths, or weak-born piglets. Okay. And you also get respiratory signs, especially in the younger pigs, where you get fever, lethargy, um, respiratory distress, such as labored breathing, coughing, there's poor growth, and there may even be sudden death in piglets. Okay. So I guess in pig farmers are people who should be most concerned about this. Absolutely. Um, we do have an outbreak currently, mm -hmm. and we want that the pig farmers um, stay alert and vigilant, monitor their pigs daily, and if they see any of these signs or any unusual signs in their pigs, they need to inform us immediately. How is it spread among pigs? So it's a highly contagious viral disease. Mm. So it's easily spread um, among the pigs, but it is also spread by fomites, which is um, through footwear, clothing, contaminated equipment. Wow. So you don't want farmers to be sharing equipment. Mm -hmm. You don't want farmers to have unauthorized persons or vehicles onto their farms because then they will be introducing the disease onto their farms. Yeah. And the same applies to leaving their farms. You don't want to carry contaminated equipment out of your farms mm -hmm. and further spreading the disease throughout the country. All right, but if, if for example, uh, let's say a, fa a farm is in an early stage of the outbreak where the farmer hasn't realized that it's theirs yet, and they you know, carry a pig to slaughter, as the case may be, and they move the pig to wherever to sell, um, does that pose any threat to anybody involved in the process? Not to the persons, because it's not zoonotic. Right. So handling the pig, handling That's the meat, fine. it's fine. But the problem would be that you're spreading the disease. Right. So we have to be very vigilant about mm -hmm. those things. Uh, and there is a, a hotline that we have established, a PRRS hotline, right. for farmers to call us at the Veterinary Services in the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. And it's 280-7945. And when we call, what sort of help do we need to get in order to manage the outbreak? Right. So once you call and you give, you give us your name and your address and what the, what the situation is, a vet will, will speak to you, mm -hmm. right, either directly or will call you back. And we will organize a site visit and we will come and examine your pigs, investigate what's happening at your farm and make informed decisions from there. Is there a cure for it or is it just something that's treatable and your, your, the pigs will have it? No, there's no cure. Oh. So it does affect the livelihood of farmers. There is serious economical loss, economic losses because of this disease. Right. So farmers really have to be on the vigilant. alert and to act fast. Yeah. So is it that they need to be vigilant to make sure that they don't uh, have any of the, like you said, random people or random vehicles coming into the farm yes. and also the pigs not going anywhere as well? Correct. Yeah. Um, the economic fallout, I think, is the, it would be the, the thing that, that definitely perks people up in terms of what that means. Yes. Um, so it affects the pig's ability to, to be able to reproduce, to give birth, but it also affects the rest of the pigs on the farm as well. Correct. So productivity is severely hampered, yeah. and that's where they would um, have a lot of economic losses. Their livelihoods would be severely affected yeah. by it. So farmers definitely want to give them that number one more time, Doc? Sure. It's 280-7945. Mm -hmm. 
2807945 is the number to call. You can get the assistance from the land from the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries yes. uh, to get a vet on site to check out the the how long does that process take from the time I call to when I get a visit. All right. So we are manning that phone line during working hours, which is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday mm -hmm. to Friday. Um, so you make a call, someone will answer the phone. After hours, you can WhatsApp or send a text message to the phone and someone would call you back either that day or the day after, depending on the urgency of your message. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the respiratory symptoms that the, the pigs would be suffering from, but it's called blue air disease. I'm assuming that the pig's ears also turn blue? Yes, sometimes it's actually not a very common clinical sign, so it's a strange name to give the disease. <laughs> okay, but are there any other signs that we should be looking at for besides um, the, the coughing, the sneezing, the wheezing, that sort of thing? Those are the major ones. Um, if your pigs or your piglets are not thriving, you know, stunted growth, poor growth, give us a call. Let us come. Let the vets come to your farm and do their examinations and make their assessments from there. Um, Doc, do you have any idea as to how, approximately how many registered pig farmers we have in Trinidad and Tobago? Um, not off the top of my head. Um, in terms of what our ministry is aware of, there's a little over 100 that okay. we know of. Right. But we also are aware that there are pig farmers out there who are not registered with us. Of course. We don't know where they are mm -hmm. and we need to because we are doing a, a nationwide surveillance, so we need to know yeah. where your farms are, we need to visit. And of course we need to manage the outbreak as well, because we don't want it to continue spreading. Um, is this something that has happened before? It has happened before. We had, this out, we had an outbreak exactly one year ago. Wow. Um, it was a farm in South, and only one farm was affected um, during that outbreak. And because we had farmer cooperation, and transparency, mm -hmm. we were able to contain the, the infection on that one farm and eradicate it at that point in time. Okay, so how does it, how does it show up again? We saw similar signs that we, where there, was, there were deaths in the pigs and there were respiratory issues. Mm -hmm. And that is what prompted us to take samples and get testing done. And then we found the disease that way. So does that is that does that mean that we may have it in one of the unregistered farms, or does that mean maybe somebody came it came in with livestock or something like that? We would be speculating there, yeah. and so because of diseases such as this, which can affect our pork industry and farmers' livelihood, I want to put that plug out there that farmers need to be very vigilant about where they source their pigs. Mm -hmm. Right? Sometimes um, they are getting piglets for. You know, maybe next to nothing in terms of cost. Yeah, deal. Yes. Yeah. And well, but that deal, yeah, there's some certain other things you get for free, such mm -hmm. as diseases. So we have to be very careful where yeah. we source our pigs. Um, is there any precautions that farmers can take when purchasing uh, piglets or pigs to be able to say, well, I'm making sure that this is a uh, disease-free pig? So they need to know their sources. It must be a reputable source. Right. And you have to assure that the pigs or the piglets that you are purchasing are healthy. And if you require veterinary assistance to um, determine that, then yeah. we are here to provide as well. And that, that part is free as well? The yes, services, the is. Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, we do provide free veterinary services to our livestock farmers. Nice. Anything else you want to let the, the nation know about before we wrap up this morning, Doc? So I want to reaffirm that our local pork is safe to eat. Right. And I would like to urge the public to continue supporting our local pork industry, I would like to let farmers know that they need to act fast and be alert and report any suspicious um, clinical signs immediately. And I also want to affirm that the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries remain confirmed and committed to safeguarding animal health, protecting the livelihood of farmers and ensuring food security for our nation. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Dr. Musai, and for sharing this information. I think it'd be very valuable to make sure that, well, one, unregistered farmers go and get registered to make sure that the, the ministry can definitely check out and make sure that everything is safe with their farms, with their pigs, yes. their piglets, and everything else involved. And the nation is also aware of what's going on, so that if you're interested in getting into pigs, you know how to start the management of that process. So thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. And that's Dr. Lisa Musai, the Chief Veterinary Officer at the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, joining us to talk about managing the outbreak of the blue ear disease among, uh, well, is the PRRS, the 
porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome, commonly known as blue air disease. But we don't know why it's called them blue air disease, because they barely did the ears are really turn blue. Either way, let's take a quick break and we come back with more. I believe we have a birthday shouts when we come back on the Now Morning Show, so stay tuned.